Hello, everybody. Thank you for stopping by. It's late. I don't even know what time it is. 6.50. Wow. It's late. <laughs> I have been a busy girl today. I don't know if anybody has seen my Facebook, but I did a very brave thing. I went on Facebook and showed what my room looked like after doing three journals. Um, a collaboration, um, and I don't know what else, but I took everything off my desk to the right, put it on top of a bin, and took me two and a half hours to put it away. And the worst thing was I had gotten that Rick Rack trim from Timu, and it was a bear to wind, but it got done. I tea stained and I, well, that's not fair. What I do is when I do my doilies, I sit at my desk and I just take a brush and my tea and I do my doilies because if I do them with my paper, they get torn. So whenever I tea stain or I avocado stain, I just put, you know, a little bit of the avocado or the tea in a bowl and then I do you know my tea staining and then these are just my coffee filters that I save and then I just put everything back in here and then it goes into a plastic envelope so I did some doilies I did some and I like doing it this way too because my um if I do it in the you know in a batch with paper every time I peel them apart they get torn every single time and this way they don't get torn so I just sit at my desk and I take a brush and I dip it in the water just like you would watercolor and um these have a nice embossing on them so and I like I like the light you know the light tea staining so I got those done what else did I get done oh and look <laughs> My bin is just about empty. And those are just scraps that need to be fussy cut and put away. It's not even trash. And I got some Happy Meal, which we will go through if we have time, which we probably won't. Oh, and my candle's empty. So don't throw your candle jars away. Just clean them out when you're done and take that little metal wick out and wipe it good and then wash it good. And then you have something to put either ribbon or lace in. So that's just an idea. I love jars. You can even keep your pencils or pens in them. See? And they look pretty on your desk. So now I'm burning one. It says Leap of Faith. It's one my daughter gave me last year. I am just taking a sip of water because I'm going to go. So, anyway, back to our book pages today. We're going to make paper bags. So, I printed on a dictionary page, and all you have to do with a dictionary page or any page that's too small is take a glue stick, you know, your Elma's glue stick, and just glue around the edge. Place it on your um, copy paper, and then run it through your printer. And then you have a beautiful printed dictionary page or book page or whatever, you know. And you can print any design. This happens to be from Gail at um, Shabby Cottage Studios. This is her wallpaper. This is one of her wallpapers. This is one of her wallpapers. This is all from the same kit. So Shabby Cottage Designs. Um, and this is on piano paper or music paper. I don't know which. I don't remember. I just pulled it out of my out of my bag of music. I mean, out of my um, envelope of my plastic envelope of um, music paper, music sheets. You know, whatever's not in a book. So we'll start with. Um, let's start with. Oh, I printed one on vellum too. I've never done one in vellum and I thought it would be fun to try. 
I don't know how it's going to work because you usually do it on a very, oh, and this is on regular printer paper, and this is on a very thin, the thinnest weight copy paper you can buy. So that's the beauty of these bags. And the nice thing about them is they're so versatile. I mean, especially if you're sending out a Happy Meal or a gift, you can put them in your journals, you can make journals out of them, you can do anything you want with them. The first time I ever saw these being made was Rach, from Rachel Bella Crafts. So I've made a gazillion of them. I made so many last Christmas, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before last. I did make my own version of different bags using um, the, um, you know, painter's paper that you get at like Lowe's or Home Depot or at your hardware store. But today we're going to print on paper, uh, regular paper, you know, printer paper. This is 27 pound. This is copy paper, probably 20 pound. This is vellum. This is book page. And this is music page, okay? So if you're going to print on book page, it's very simple. Just glue around it, you know, very lightly around the edge, very lightly. Place it on your page and then run it through your computer. And boom, you've got a decorated page. Okay, so let's start with this one because it will be the simplest one to do because... It's the one I'm typically used to using because it's on copy paper, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're going to have it um, horizontal. Yeah, vertical, horizontal, I don't know. You're gonna have it this way, your eight and a half by 11 way, okay? So you're gonna fold it into about an inch and just make sure it's lined up good, okay? And then just crease it. And then you wanna take it and you wanna fold this back about a quarter of an inch, okay? I'm sure you've, a lot of you have probably made these before, but I just wanted to end the week with doing some book page and, you know, music page and printing on different, different things to make different things. So it's been a wonderful week. So, oh, before we do that, <laughs> we need to cut this edge off because it's just extra and we don't need it. Unfortunately, I do have to bring out my cutter though because, you know, I can't cut a straight line. And I really hope that all my little bits and pieces are out of my hair. Let me just run down here and just make sure it's clean. Sometimes if anything gets in there, my blade should be sharp enough. I haven't changed it in a while. And I've been doing a lot of cutting. So we're going to just take that inch off okay but save it and just make sure it's folded up you know so that the ends so that your ends meet sometimes when I fold I don't fold properly you're gonna need your scoreboard too I'm sorry folks I know it's kind of a pain in the neck I don't have I don't like measuring but for this, it's best. So then you're going to do this. Then you're gonna fold this back about a quarter of an inch, okay? And then, should I do that right? Wait a minute. Before you fold it. <laughs> okay, you're going to glue this part here. So what you're going to do is take off your half an inch. All right, let's start over. <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
you want to fold this until the inch, okay? Boy, that was bad. So folded it, folded it an inch, okay? And take that inch off. Because I'm really confusing you. It's been a day. I did cleaning. Oh my gosh, I did so much today. I'm tired. But I'm not real tired. Oh, and I was going to do a walkthrough in my journal and I forgot to do two things, so I couldn't. So take that off. Now, save that. Now what you want to do is now you want to fold this about a quarter of an inch. Okay. And then you want to bring this down and you want to glue that to that edge. Okay. Make sure everything is straight. I just like to hold it there like that. And we want to glue that. And I am going to use my I'm going to use my art glitter glue because it dries fast if it's here. I know it's here. I, I cleaned today. <laughs> oh dear. I'm sorry for my reach. Where is it? Oh, it's right there. So did you have a great Saturday? I haven't really done a lot of Facebook today. Something's wrong with my profile. It told me to change my profile pictures, so I did. And I still can't see my profile. So I don't know what's wrong. And I don't even care. I just didn't have time to pay attention. So you're going to glue, you know, making sure. And you can tell if this is even by it, by it being here. And here is even okay so now you're just gonna glue this piece here yes yes because you have to glue it shut <laughs> oh dear so just get the glue I haven't done this for a while but I saw somebody do it the other day and I thought oh yes I forgot about those. So then just make sure it's run even along that edge. Okay? Okay. So now you have a tube. Like this. I'm just going to run my hand where that glue is just to make sure it's set. Because we're going to put a gusset in here. You don't have to. You could simply fold up the bottom, cut it, and that could be your bag. But we're going to put a, a gusset in this bag. Okay? So we need our handy dandy. Best thing I ever did, I got a... Um, I bought a very inexpensive at the Dollar Tree shoe rack, canvas shoe rack. It's got, well, it had four shelves, but I couldn't fit four. And it's got a, a good underneath. So I have my box of scraps, not scraps, but like um, packaging and stuff underneath. And then all my tools. So they're right there under my desk as opposed to on top of my desk very nice so now you want to put this here and you want to come in with your bone folder uh, or your scoring tool which I don't really like to use that one because this is an old scoreboard I really need a new one I'm gonna move my light because I can't really see very well even though I have my glasses on is that too bright I hope not it's getting dark out I think it's gonna rain I hope it rains my ducks need some rain. Okay, so you're gonna go in. So now what you have is 
once it's all folded and this is glued, you have like four and three quarters. So you want to come in to four and a half on this side. No, I'm sorry. You want to come in to, um, let's see. So here's four. So, yeah. So you want to come in one, two, three quarters of an inch is good. And then over here, the same thing. One, two, three quarters of an inch. Okay. And just make sure you're going hard enough so that you can get that on both sides, but not go through your paper. Like on a book page or something like that. Don't go down too deep because you don't want to tear your paper. And I'm just going to do this one more time. Okay. So now we can get rid of this. And this. And now you're just going to simply open it up. These are so cute. These are perfect for Celeste at Woodland Inspired. She sells, unless you have already the die cut, she sells bag toppers. And I actually have some, so I'll grab one and show you, or you could make your own. But I definitely have to order some from her because I love them. As soon as I saw them, I remembered making these and I thought, ooh, these are gonna be perfect. So you wanna take it where your score mark is and you just wanna fold this down. You'll see it. You can't see it in the camera because of the patterned paper, but give that a nice score. Even if you have to use your score tool, give it a nice press. Okay, and then find your other score mark on this side. Press it down with your fingers. I know who did this. I know who did this. Oh no, yes. You know who does this a lot? Because she makes a ton of them. And I think she may have just done another journal with them. Is Cindy. And I uh what is her facebook group oh my gosh i just made the most adorable journal for her facebook group i'll show it to you not today so you want to make sure that that gusset is really closed tight as well i know she makes these as well so if you don't have a bag you can make a bag and personally it's a lot cheaper and prettier probably than any bag you'll find and you can make these as big as you want or as small as you want just you know figure out your own sizes but I'm just giving you these measurements because these are this is just the size I want to make and now I'm going to come over here and find my gussets my um I'm just going to fold this out for a second so I can find my score mark here. There it is. Is that it? Yep. See, this is harder because I'm using regular copy paper on this one. I mean, it's fine. You can use regular copy paper. It's just harder to, to do. So there's one side, and then my other gusset is right here. I don't know how the vellum is gonna work because you know vellum, when you fold it and score it and bend it. So then just take it and lay it flat. Go along here just to make that nice and flat and then flip it and do the same thing on that score line. 
and that way you know. And then you're just simply going to take it and you're gonna fold that in. And then press. And you have a gusset on your bag. Oops, be very careful, make sure you stay straight. Unlike me, who doesn't do anything straight. <laughs> And then take it and turn it over and do the same thing, making sure that everything lines up good. And like I said, this is a little bit harder because I'm using regular, you know, the, uh, the photo paper, not photo paper, but yeah, it, no, it's. Whatever we print on, 27 pound HP copy paper. So there you go, there's your bag, almost. So just kinda do that and you've got an adorable paper bag of your choice. See how pretty? So now we want to make the bottom, and you can make this as tall or as short as you want. I'm not going to give you any measurements because you can just make it as tall or as short as you want. I'm going up about a half an inch is what I typically will do, is go up a half because I want room in my bag. And then you need to open it back up. And you need to get rid of this part because it's bulk. Just like anything else, you just need to get rid of that. So I'll just take my scissors and I'll just get rid of that bulk right there. I actually need to go right into that gusset. So go right into your gusset and go up to your fold like that and just then cut across that line why am I hung up there there we go you know what I need my bigger scissors for that excuse my reach Sorry, I'm just used to working with my bigger scissors because I can see better. So then you're just gonna go right across that fold line. And you can make these up for Christmas in Christmas paper. You could cover, which is my favorite thing to do. You already know what I'm gonna say. Cover it with Christmas napkins. So you just want to go across that gusset like so and then you want to see this little edge here you want to cut that off as well so cut that off get rid of all the bulk this little piece here this little piece here Not doing a very tidy job, like am I? Get rid of this piece here and here. And then all you're going to do is you're going to go this way and then flip it over and go this way. And then you're going to flip it back up like this. Give it a good crease. Make sure you don't have any edges sticking out. I don't. Take your glue. I have a little bit of a little piece there. So I'm just going to snip it there. Fold it up like so and that's it 
you have yourself an adorable, and don't worry about this little piece here, because it's fine. Just don't, there's a little piece I didn't get there. Hold on. You just don't want any bulk on there because it's just bulk. You just want to get your glue. Arc glitter glue is great because it dries fast. Go like this along this bottom here. Don't go on that top up there. Because you want to get as much room and then just fold it up. Grease it. Bone fold. And now you can even decorate your bag any way you want. But how adorable. And now you have a bag that you can use for anything. You could put a tag in there. You could glue it to your um, journal and put a tag in there. Put a little notch up here. Put a tag in there. Um, and then you have space back here. Use it for a paper bag. You know. Um, let me just get one of Celeste from Woodland Inspired Bag Toppers. Real quick. Here we go. I don't have this die, but this is a bag, a treat bag topper. She's embossed it, excuse me. The die comes like this, and Celeste emboss it. She does, excuse me, beautiful work. But now all you do is this, and there you go. You have any kind of beautiful bag, you know, for a gift or, or what have you, okay? Or you don't have to use it for a bag. You could use it for anything. Or you could take what you took off and you could simply do this. It's, it's wide enough so you can. And watch what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take my scallop punch. Not my, yeah, whatever this is. <laughs> Sorry. And I am simply going to do this. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. I'm going to go across like so. This is a very old Martha Stewart punch, but you could use anything or nothing at all. You could scallop it yourself. You could use something different, a different color. You could use a doily. A doily would be so cute. Let's look at a doily too. Because this makes a mess. And don't worry, I'm not putting this on the floor. Absolutely not. <laughs> going right into my trash. So then, if you wanted to, you could do something like this. And all you would have to do is make sure it's inside the gusset, of course, because you want to be able to open it. So you'd have to manipulate it so that you had it in the gusset. Actually, I'd probably do it this way because then you'd see it, you know, just an idea. And just make sure that when you glue it on there, it's in the gusset like that, or else the bag won't open, you know? So you could do that, but I was just thinking how cute a doily would be. This is, I don't know what size, <clears throat> I think this is a six inch, maybe an eight inch. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six inch. So you could do this. Let me just fold it in half. 
Oh, I thought there's like three of them here. Hold on. Let me just get one. Fold it in half, like so. Put a little fussy cut flower on there or a sticker or what have you. And then perhaps just trim this. I'm thinking off the top of my head, people. I've never even done a doily. That's not straight. I'm sure now. But anyway, you get the point. So you could do that, which would be adorable. I don't want to cut my bag. There you go. How cute is that? Adorable. Let me get just a tiny paper clip. I think I have a tiny one here. Hold on. And then just put a little ribbon at the top. Is that not cute? Oh, that's so cute. You could even use, you know, a tea, tea stained one or whatever to match this. You could watercolor this. It's just too cute. If you wanted to make a journal, you could attach, you know, somehow and make a journal with it. So, and then you could have pockets and what have you. But they're adorable. I think they're so cute. Um, let's quickly do the, um, and you don't have to stay for this, but let's see what the piano looks like. So I'm going to take it, do the same thing, fold it. And I'm not going to get out my scoreboard because I already know what I'm doing, but. You know what? I think I'll do the vellum. I've never done the vellum. The, the book page is going to be exactly the same, okay? So we're going to fold it to an inch or half an inch. I'm going to do this one a half an inch. I want my bag to be bigger. So I'm only going to do a half an inch. I just want, I, I just want this one to be bigger. So I'm going to fold it at a half an inch, but I'm not going to like, I'm just going to press here and here. Okay. Get out my cutter. And I'm going to take off that half an inch here. Is that a half an inch? Yes. Okay. So now we'll fold over about a quarter of an inch. Make sure you're doing it a quarter of an inch all the way so it's not wonky. This this has to be pretty precise. Get my arc litter glue. Glue this edge down. Fold this over. Oh, I hope this works. This is vellum. I've done tracing paper that works really well, really well. Fold that over. And you can use any printable you have or napkin. 
I like to give people options that don't have printers. See, now I just glued that down without it being completely on the edge. So now I have to re-glue it because that dried already. The beauty of vellum. Because if it was paper, that wouldn't have come apart. So just make sure your edges meet up like that. See down there? Make sure that meets. And then I'm going to hold it up like this, folks, so I can see it well. Take your fingers. Make sure that that meets up. Mine isn't because I can't really see it very well. Even with my magnifying glasses on, I'm having a hard time. I don't know how this vellum's going to work. But we're going to try it. You know, why not? Now I'm just going to take it again and just kind of press along that line so that it's really not a fold. Like, you know what I mean? It's there. You can feel it, but just making sure it's glued good, too. Seems to be. Like I said, I don't really know how the vellum works because I've never used the vellum. All right. So now we're going to just make sure that everything's lining up good and press it. Okay, then we're going to take the scoreboard and you can score it any way you want, but you, you know, it has to be the same on both sides. Oops. So again, I'm going to go in uh, one, two, three quarters of an inch. One, two, three quarters. Oh. I have to be careful on this scoreboard because it just, I really need a new one. And then three quarters of an inch on this side. So, kind of make sure it's flat and right up against that edge. So, one, one, two, three quarters of an inch. And press it down so you're going to see your um, score line on the other side, which I think... Yeah, I can see it. With the vellum, you can see it good. And then again, fold it out. Find your score lines. And the vellum's not easy, but it's pretty. Fold that up. Find your other score line. Which I'm trying, folks. I'm just trying to find it. I can't see it. I'm having to feel for it. Stay on your score line. Otherwise, it won't come out right. So stay on your score line. Once you have it, you know, you're on your score line, then you can press it down with your bone folder. Vellum's a little bit tough, but it can be done for sure. And it looks beautiful. It really does. It's beautiful. It's a little tough, I will admit. It's tougher than the tracing paper, obviously, as you can hear. But 
so much less expensive. And you get to pick your own patterns. Christmas, birthday, anniversary, journals, Easter. They're so cute. I wonder why they don't make these in um, kits. You know, that would be good. I have to mention that to Gail since I'm using her wallpaper. <laughs> Hi, Gail, if you're watching. Again, Shabby Cottage Studios, if you like this wallpaper. It is gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And it's very inexpensive. Shabby Cottage Studios on Etsy. It was funny, I was watching Meredith. Hi, Meredith, if you're watching. And I saw this wallpaper she was using. It was in her journal, and I was like, oh, please visit her channel. She is so inspiring. Especially if you're making a tall, skinny journal for the first time. She's doing a, a, a beginning to end series. And she does such a great job. She really does. I have her on my playlist. I will watch her a dozen times over and over because she's just pleasant. She's so sweet to listen to. She explains everything she's doing. And she has wonderful ideas. And she's she's very fast. I'm not. I'm very indecisive. So then again, you're gonna you're just folding it back in, meeting up your score lines, you know, to make your gusset. You're pushing that in and making your gusset. And again, just decorate it up the way you want. Just put a top on it. Don't put a top on it. Make a journal out of it. Put it in your, your journal for a tag. I'm not doing anything with these right now because I don't know. I might send it to, I might send it to you, Meredith, and you can put it in your journal. <laughs> she lives in Scottsdale, Arizona, where my husband and I had told each other on our first trip to Scottsdale, which was in 1980, I think it was 1988, was our first trip. It was in March. It was on the 16th, the week of the 16th of March, and I we both decided right then and there, and we were young. I think I was. I know I was like 20 something, 24, maybe 25. And I said, we're retiring here. And he said, oh, I agree. And we went back and we went back and we went back and it was just such, oh, when she ever said she was from Scottsdale, I yelled at my husband, Maris from Scottsdale. <laughs> But she has children that actually moved there to go to college. I'm going up a quarter, a quarter of an inch. She had children move there to go to college, and her and her husband moved from very cold, very wet weather. And, um, well, I'll let her tell you the rest of the story. But anyway, she's very happy there, except it's starting to get warm, although I'm used to it because it's Florida. <laughs> But it's dry. I love Arizona. And we wanted to be near the kids. And now guess what? The kids are everywhere. All over the country. <laughs> well, we have three still in Florida. But they're still very far away. So, anyway. Again, you want to just cut that off. Cut your bulk off. By simply doing that. I'm going to probably do a better job this time because I'm using my bigger scissors and I can see better. I can't wait till June. I, not to rush things or anything, but I have my eye surgery in June. So I don't know how long before I'll be able to do videos, but that's okay. I know you'll wait for me. I 
have a benign tumor in my left eye. I woke up one morning and could not see. I opened up my Bible and it looked like I put my glasses on and I opened up my Bible and it looked like a bunch of ants running across the page. They weren't running. The words weren't moving. I just couldn't see them at all. And it was Christmas Eve morning and our eye doctor, fortunately we had just moved here in May and our eye doctor, we called the eye doctor and he called back and he said, come in. And we went in. We had established with him, thank God. And um, so then again, just cut here, turn it over. I always turn it over just so I cut the right way. Turn it over, take your glue, fold it up. I didn't even use my bone folder, folks. I probably should have, but I didn't, but that's okay. You don't need to. And then you're just gonna glue this bottom. And you have an adorable bag that you can just place anything in. And it's just so cute. It is a little bit hard with, you know, harder with the um, vellum, but I think it looks beautiful. I do, I like it a lot. It was a little bit tougher though, but it still came out cute. I'd have to go over it with my bone folder and make it a little bit more even Steven here. Because you know, vellum's not, I don't know if they sell a lighter weight vellum. I don't know. I just bought a package of vellum when I bought my vellum. And this is the first time I've ever made a bag out of it, but it came out good. I like it a lot. Just use your bone folder. Once you have those even, use your bone folder and flatten everything down good. Because you know vellum, it just needs to be flattened. And there you go. Is that not... I mean, you have to admit that it's adorable. So sweet. I just love it. And you've got your little gussets on both sides. And it's just darling. I just love it. And you can definitely see through it. Put something in it. This probably won't be the best thing to put in it because it matches. That was going to be another bag, but that's all right. I'll use it again. But a cute tag, right? That would be an adorable tag to go with the bag because it matches. Oh, yes, for sure. Adorable. That would be a cute tag and bag. And then you just put it down on your page. You know, you'd have to cut it down a little bit. But just fold it, glue it so it's nice and sturdy. Or not. Actually, what you could do is line this with, um, you know, some tea stain paper. And fold it in half. Right? And then put it in there. And then the person can open it up and it would be writing space. Or you could just put gesso on it. You know? This has 1910, it has script on it. It's beautiful, I love it. Love this wallpaper. I love all the wallpaper in this kit. Thanks, Gail, if you're watching. But anyway, many ideas. I really hope that you all enjoyed that video. I'm sorry we didn't get to the music page, but I think you get the point now of how to make them. And um, here's another page, which I didn't want to confuse you, but this is very simple on the copy paper. I didn't want to confuse you, you know, by saying, oh, wait, 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 you know. 
so but that will be another one so how pretty right just beautiful i think they're beautiful and the tracing paper comes out just beautiful gorgeous and if you don't have a printer use napkin put napkin on top of your your paper your um anything book page anything and then do exactly what i just did and you have yourself beautiful bags to put anything in and yeah or use in your journals or make a journal out of them cindy makes a lot of them and i can't remember her channel cindy t that's it just google cindy t I'll put her link in the description box below and just look on her channel for paper bags because I know she makes them the same way. Rach makes them the same way. That's Rach and Bella Crafts. Um, she makes them exactly the same way. That's the first time I had seen them made. Cindy makes them the same way. I think everybody does. But anyway, those are the two channels I'd like to mention today. Shout out to Meredith. Thanks, Meredith. I knew I had this. I said, what paper is that? Is that Gail's? And then I looked on my computer. I said, never mind, I have it. I just hadn't printed this one yet. I had printed this one several times. But anyway, that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoy your Sunday. And I really hope to come tomorrow with part one of my walkthrough of my gorgeous journal. I love her so much. All right. Until tomorrow, be well, be kind, and God bless. Bye-bye, y'all.